Hey, what's up? You, what am I doing? I'm, uh, my water's all the way over there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What is going on? As you may, may not know, you know, if you ever get an email from me, at the end, you're in the signature box somewhere, it says, uh, I follow no one, semicolon, and seek no followers. I follow no one and seek no followers. And that's for the most part. But there's always one exception or exceptions to the rule. Now, my one exception to the rule is Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Yes, sir, re Bobby. <laughs> I should say, yes, sir, re Mr. Bobby. Don't matter. Look. Oh, um, here's the thing. I'm a Neely Fuller Jr. acolyte. I have to look that word up for you. I don't even know what it means. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Don't worry about it. In other words, I follow the music really for the junior. Uh, uh, but I was, you know, I read, I, I read, you read this book. This is his uh, book, his seminal book, his only book. Uh, the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, the Compensatory Counter Racist Code by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This is the uh, 2016 edition. I actually had the um, uh, 1984 edition. Uh, it's bound and stuff like that, but it's in a it's in, it's in, uh, well, actually, it's in Dumbaza now because they actually use it. See my group in Dumbaza? Young people that use it? No matter. Anyway, so I, I have a copy here. I got copies. <laughs> I got copies in St. Louis. I got copies in New York, here in Virginia. I got copies all over the place. Um, I just order them. You know, I support the brother, you know, I support the concept. But, you know, and then and, 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 and what you start off in the morning, I start off here with it. I start off in the morning, but uh, it says here, every day, all day, wherever you are, ask yourself these four questions. What do I want to do? Why do I want to do what I want to do? How do I plan to do what I want to do? And what do I expect the constructive results to be? That's your daily, um, early morning, whatever, or morning wake up mantra. That, well, that's, that's mine. I'm sorry. It's not yours. Okay, and then the way you read this book, you know, it's like it's, it's, it's scripture. <laughs> you just pick it up any place, you know, <clears throat> and you actually you can make three hundred sixty-five days. Anyway, you pick it up any place, and they just open it with. Now, I had been reading this morning. No, last night actually, this section here, uh, under under area 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 five of uh, you know of, of activities of human activities, and this is the area of law, right? And this one says, uh, uh, here, I this one little section here I'm going to read. Boop, 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 boop. It's a little it's a tiny section here. Um, it says, try to put yourself, um, I'm sorry, try to put as much distance as you can between yourself and any persons, dash, white or non-white, that's very important, whom you have reason to believe will seek to do unjust harm to you now this is important because you are human beings and you sense things you know what i mean so you should anyway so he makes these bold statements and then he then he has explanations right under it right so there's going to be a little paragraph of explanation bear with me sunday morning reading make like you're in church make like i'm the preacher i'm reading out the text the scripture right now so, hey i should do this every sunday ah good idea wait till i get back to the anyway um, avoid being in their presence. Talk about those people, uh, white or non-white, whom you, re you have reason to believe will seek to do you, uh, you know, unjust harm. That's the point. Um, when you see them coming, try to go somewhere else. Always try to be where they are not. Avoid saying anything to them that is not necessary. If you cannot get away from them, make plans for ways and means to protect yourself from them by systematically and efficiently being ready to do something that they were not prepared for you to do. That works for in your favor, but also produces a constructive result. In other words, if they do, if they do join you, then, then it's going to be a you know, it's going to be a constructive result. Well, that's how I read it. When possible and necessary. All conflicts should be minimized. You know, you have to you have to make like a you know I'm a signal male, but 
at times I do the alpha thing, but almost like a beta male, just submit. <laughs> One major way to minimize conflict is to minimize all non-constructive conflict uh, contact with the makers of conflict. One major way to minimize conflict is to minimize all non-constructive contact bracket with the makers of conflict, close bracket. No contact, no conflict. So if you know you're going to be in a situation <laughs> or, or if it's, it's been deemed before you was in a situation where, you know, bad things happen when I'm hanging out with this group or this person or whatever it is, or you, just, then you need to just chill away from that. So I want to say that, but here's the, uh, uh, but one more thing. Lately, uh, you know, because, you know, I watch a, I watch a lot of, I don't have to do any. I shouldn't say this way. I'm, I'm uh, retired. <laughs> That's not true. well. I, I I don't have a you know, I I have a little pension that I can just chill. You know what I mean? Or read, or you know, exp you know, look at things and stuff like that. So I'm always watching. You know, especially these uh, YouTube channels where it's talking race or whatever. Have you. And every time you look at these these things, they they they'll go like we're all equal and whatever. Hey, this has got to be that. That's where a lot of you real uh, libertarians or liberals, they say, oh, it's a welfare state. You know, you, you can't give folk folks money, whatever have you, not knowing that, you know. Like for instance, stimulus check, they all jump on that. Well, if poor people actually got the stimulus check, you know what they would do. They say, oh, no, they be, they'd be alcohol. Whatever. No, 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 they'd be paying their bills. When rich people get stimulus checks, what do they do? They invested in something because they got excess money. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So, but any ex, I look at any any time they have an analysis for anything, especially this whole uh, societal announcement, they never they always leave out race. They ha when I say race, no, they say race, and but they say it in a certain way. You know, oh black and white, oh, we all together. Oh, you know, we all use achievement or whatever have you. But they but but their analysis forgets the history. I'm talking about uh, 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 black folks who built this country. I'm not talking about recent. Uh, when I say recent, uh, say immigration since, uh, say, 1990, 1965. I'll put it that way. No, okay. Immigration since 1975. I'll put it up a little bit. You know? Then things change. Because then they talk about, oh, like, oh, that makes all black people, you know, the same. But no, the folks that built this company, the folks that were unfairly, da 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 da, da they don't. So you see? Okay. Now you say, well, wait a second. You know, no, we always had immigrants. No, but I'm talking about before the. Uh, let me show you something on my computer here because I have been looking at this. Uh, oh boy, I have to hope I can move this whole thing. Maybe I'll take the laptop over here. Hold on a second. I'll be right there. I'm going to get my water too. Oh, it's water. Where's my water? Oh, here's my water right here. Let me bring this laptop over here. This one, I'm old. Dell laptop. This one is a. Uh, if you have an old a laptop like this, don't get rid of it. It's going to be valuable. Maybe good material and stuff like that. This is a, I, uh, I stop now, but um, I, when I heard of uh, the movement, ADOS, you know, American Descendants of Slavery, or I call the North American Descendants of Chattel Slavery, uh, when they first started, I was sitting in, in, uh, in South Africa. And so I immediately went, because I had been listening to, to, to Yvette and Iron Man. I would listen to, yeah, Iron Man first, then we, and when Yvette joined Iron Man, I listened to them, and then when she went off on her own. So, so when they created, when her and uh, Tony, Antonio uh, created uh, ADUS or you know, sparked it up. Then I was right there from the beginning. So I started to do what I always do. I'm an archivist. So I just started making commentary because at the same time I'm talking about my own memoir, my own life, right? And so you can almost, for those, for at least two years from, from whenever it started, when, when is this date on here? I forget when is this is. Well, this is one I did early on. It's called Conspiracies Against, Conspiracies Against ADUS. Because they was talking about, you know, um, how 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 the country used to look, look before, you know, before um, uh, Johnson made his speech and whatever. When they started letting uh, different immigrants groups in and that, uh, and so everybody thinks they're anti-immigrant. But here is here is my class. There's a uh, you can't see it very well, but this is one of the things I did, and um, it's on my it was on this YouTube channel. Look at the conspiracies against ADOS, and you see this this video, right? Now, if you look, this is a class picture from 1961 and 62. These, this is the South Bronx. Now, we had a unique situation in the South Bronx in that we had, oh, I guess I'll leave this right there. Um, we, we had every, in the projects, 
like even in this class picture, you can't see it here, but I point out in this thing. My next door neighbors in a project that was in a, the Patterson housing project, Patterson projects in South Bronx. Um, my next door neighbors were white, the Laxines, you know. In fact, Marlene Laxine is in my class. Darlene, the younger, the, the one, the younger girl, she was my her, my sister's age, and you know they used to talk through the wall. <laughs> you know, you know, kids do. They talk through the wall like that. Um, and then you know, so we we would everybody and we had everybody. The next to them were well, that, that same in our same section was Puerto Ricans. Well, they were Puerto Ricans, right? The Garcias. And then upstairs, you know, we had white. You know, we had a chicky, a hunchback. We had a cripple, whatever. We had a whole building. And, you know, we were, you know, we all together. And the Patterson Project was like that. It's very unique because you grow up with these different things. Oh, and we met the Jewish people on <laughs> at school on PS thirty one up there on the concourse because they came down from the concourse. So we were all together in there. So when you grow up in that sort of atmosphere, you have a different perspective on race. You know. Especially if you just grew up the downtrod, then you identify more with the, with the down. Don't tell me you you know downtrod. Then you do a thing. Don't get me wrong. You still remain in your other thing. Like, I never. Marlene was next door, same age, but we never you know got together or nothing like that. Um, so so I'm just trying to say you just you know each other's culture, and it's interesting. Like for instance, I was because I've been doing football all these last whatever, and um, uh, Sh uh, Shannon Sharp, who I really like as a commentary. And Skip Bayless was doing this thing, and Skip was, Skip Bayless was saying how he grew up uh, uh, because certain circumstances that uh, uh, a black woman, you know, had to take care of him a lot in in uh, uh, especially in the summer. It was taking him a lot, and uh, so he's around black people all the time. So when he got to wherever he got to, and he would see players, he would actually be able to talk to him about race without being uncomfortable. When there's a lot of white people, he's oof, you're all white situation. You have another perspective. If you grew up in an all-black situation, you have a whole other perspective. And it's quite interesting. I, I noticed this in my entire life. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. So constantly coming. When I went, when I was uh, in the Air Force or, or any kind of thing, uh, I, I worked at Princeton for a while, uh, Princeton Medical Center. Well, it used to be Princeton Hospital. When I started working there, it changed to Princeton Medical Center. It's like all white, even though I lived on Lee Avenue, which is like, you know, it's like Paul Robeson Street, you know? Uh, what happened, I... They didn't intimidate. You know, this is like high class. They never intimidated me. You know, even in the Air Force, you know, we made these big time generals or whatever. It's like I know because I knew all. You know, my my roommates, my roommate in uh, in the Air Force, uh, Pascual Becerro, who we call, or everybody call him Archie. I think I think he's. I gotta look. Well, I don't have him. I think he's a doctor down in Florida someplace now. I gotta try to look up Becerro, or call him up, and see what happened. See see what happened to Archie. Anyway, the point is. It's different. So so you don't come, you, oh man. So I don't have to have all these analysis about race, whatever. My thing is like, hey, something's wrong. If it's, I, I deal with the downtrodden. And in that group of the downtrodden, I know that uh, 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 ADOS people, they need to be compensated. So even if these folks, folks want to cut off whatever they want to cut off, my thing is, oh, that's fine. Um, but hey, you still got to pay us. If you want to cut Social Security, all the rest of that stuff, that's fine. We'll take we'll take the reparations, and not only I'm not just talking about a, a financial thing, but you know some, some other stuff, you know. So, what am I saying? I'm saying that depending on put your perspective is how racialized or that you're thinking. I don't think I do think racial. Everybody thinks racial because right there in your face. But when I'm traveling around, especially when I used to travel around the world, I had no qualms. I mean, you know, I know I had no inferiority complex about my. My circumstance, where I came from, or whatever happened, and when I always dealt, I never. I guess also there's some sort of the cadet corps gave me a certain um, a New York Commission side cadet corps which I grew up in Pennsylvania Military Fraternity, which I was part of. Uh, they get you get a, a certain you know confidence. Your 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 how do you say you don't have now what is that thing you have when you when you're not confident whatever you get a lot of confidence. Of course, dealing dealing with theater as a stage manager, you got to. No, listen. So I'm built a certain way. But I understand when I see other people get really racialized and put everything in terms of race, I understand that. I can't do that. You see? This is why Tanila Fuller book is so important. Because you can jump all that stuff if you have a code. Because certain, everybody has, if you have a code, then you can lean on a code rather than lean on these, uh, these other, like the race or whatever have you, you know, these other things. Because a code will, will keep you instead. So Mr. Neely Fuller's code, if everybody, uh, 
adopted it, or all, all the downtrodden, as well as the 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 uh, the, 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 the what do you call it? What does he call it? You know, those people, those uh, the white people, <laughs> or the people who have who go on another code, right? If they say, okay, we're gonna follow this, then it would all be over. No more racism. I mean, sure, you have that, uh, uh, you know, unfairness or, you know, or what do you call it, bigotry or whatever you have that. But as far as systemic racism, go on. So uh, you think about that, mull that over. And uh, this has been, hey, this has been a Sunday service from me, T, from the Patterson's Taking the Train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.